The students began lining up at 10 o'clock this morning outside the Ryan Center for one of college basketball's hottest rivalries. The battle for bragging rights in the Ocean State has the Providence Friars out of the Big East taking on the Rhode Island Rams of the Atlantic 10 Conference. The first regular season meeting between these two schools way back in 1935. This will be the 130th all-time meeting. Providence leads 74-55. The Friars have won eight of the last nine meetings. However, the last time they made the trip here to Kingston, the Friars went back to Providence. Losers. And welcome everybody, Doug Sherman along with Mark Plansky. So glad you could join us here tonight. And you having played for Villanova in the Big Five know all about rivalry games. What mark should we expect here tonight? An energy in an environment that you can't comprehend until you play in it for the first time. And I tell you what, every possession means something in a rivalry game. And if you don't play every possession with all your effort, you're going home losing tonight, folks. Well, Mark, we've got some star power on both sides. We start with Alpha Diallo, clearly the Alpha Dog for the Friars. And then on the other side, Fats Russell is on an epic roll. Well, he's the Alpha Duck, six foot seven, 215 pounds. Duck loves to get out. He dominates the paint for a guard. Great rebounding. Rebounding is the way he's leading the Friars in. What touches is what he needs. And Fats Russell, Fats Russell is playing as well as any guard in the country right now. And the game for URI will depend on how many successful trips he touches the ball and gets to the rim. Well, the last meeting, up at the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence, neither of those two guys shot very well. You can see the combined numbers. Two for 19. You just never know. Well, you never know. In a game like this, the stars can get tense. They can get anxious. And last year, Fats Russell came in after all that great talent graduated, and Danny Hurley left to go coach UConn, and he was the man. And guess what? You're not ready for it, Doug, until you actually get in that position. This year, he's comfortable. He's worked hard in the offseason, and he's playing unbelievably well. Rams with the basketball first. In their keeny blue with dark trim white lettering, the Friars in their road blacks. Big collision in 17 seconds in. We've got our first foul. It goes against Jermaine Harris, the sophomore for Rhode Island. And picked up by David Duke, the best defender on a very good defensive Providence Friars team. Doug, it's not the defensive end that Ed Cooley's worried about tonight. It's the offensive end. He needs to protect the basketball, and Luan Pippins has to distribute the ball and make good decisions. Here is David Duke trying to get the ball back to Luani Pipkins, who scored over 1,400 points in three years at UMass. And if the Friars are to click this year and make a lot of noise in conference as they hope, they're going to need their stars like Diallo. Duke, Pipkins to lead the way. Two on the shot clock. Hold his block. And a shot clock violation. And it's so important in a rivalry game that you, the intensity level, the hypeness is so high, Doug, that your defense is going to be at a level that you're not comfortable in practice ever seeing. So slow it down. Show the ball. You show a little ball, guys will be flying, trying to block it, and then you take it right to the rim. A capacity crowd here at the Ryan Center. Going to be around 8,000 people. And our second offensive foul for the Rams already in a legal screen. That is a tough call. That's Harris's second foul in a minute. And they're not deep. URI folks are maybe eight guys deep, probably seven. And that puts them at an immediate disadvantage on the front line. Yeah, foul trouble throughout his year plus has been an issue for Harris. And also hurting that depth, as you know, Mark, Dana Tate is suspended for tonight's game due to a violation of team rules. So the Rams have one fewer option off that bench. And Tate's a big Big athlete, a nice wing player. And again, another defensive call. You know, it, it, you need a leader on the court in a game like this early on. Well, that man knows all about the Providence Rhode Island rivalry. 50 year old grew up in Providence, just a couple of miles from the PC campus, former star at Central High School. And now in his ninth year as head coach of the Friars, he has been through this before on both sides. One of the two guys, I think, only that have been on both coaching staffs. Martin misfires. Indeed, Fran Fischilla, our colleague with ESPN, was also an assistant, both at URI and at Providence. David Duke can't get the roll. Oh, 
on the offensive glass, Khalif Young breaks the seal for the Friars. Yeah, he's a power forward, Young. He's a big guy, and the energy level is going to be demonstrated on the offensive glass. URI has to keep the guys in the black unis off that glass. Yeah, Friars, the Friars have legitimate size up front. They're bigger, they're more athletic, they're deeper, but... Cyril Longin, I can hang with anybody, does. He's a beast. 6'8", senior from East Orange, New Jersey, with his first two. Young, make it two for two for the senior from Vaughn, Ontario. And that's huge. That, any outside contribution that they can get from that young man is an addition. Duke the takeaway. Shovel pass, Holt, and he lays it off the glass. Good offense, leading right to transition offense. Back cut. And the first two points for Fats Russell. Coming off Andrew a brilliant 32-point performance at West Virginia last time. And how about that dish by the big man? Fats Russell. Back tap comes to Pipkins. Pipkins comes in averaging just a touch under nine points per game. He finds Diallo who misses. Holt again on the offensive glass. Sticks it in. Mangevine got caught in no man's lair and Doug. He went to block the shot by Diallo and then couldn't get back in position on the inside to get the rebound. That is where Providence has the advantage. Langevine again to the left hand. This one rattles out. You can see with this early uh, tempo, URI is getting back. Only one guy crashing, and that's Langevin. They need to get one or two additional guys on the offensive rebounding glass, if nothing else, to slow down the transition for the Providence Friars. Diallo, no. Tyrese Martin hands it off to Fats Russell, who goes to work. Another rebound for Diallo. Back the other way comes Lawani Pipkins, the graduate transfer from Chicago. Around and out. Young again. Massive on the boards. Massive. That's a man right there, folks. <laughs> Seniors in rivalry games, they just play in a different level, too. And he is clearly demonstrating in the first four minutes, I'm here to play tonight. He has been through this rivalry game three times previously. And Young comes out with a perfect three for three start from the floor. Jeff Doughton's first shot attempt, well defended by David Duke. The Friars play great man-to-man -man defense. You're not just going to put the ball and go one-on-one -on -one versus these guys. You've got to swing it side to side, in and out. Turnovers have been a problem for the Friars this year. It'll be Rams ball when we come back. Well, you mentioned man, Mr. Young. Hey, all you have to do is get inside position, and it helps when you're six foot nine, 240 pounds. Get off my back. And coming up. Inside the rivalry with the Providence Friars on the road in hostile territory tonight. So what does the URI Providence uh, rivalry game mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. You know, growing up, you know, I always heard of you know, the PC URI rivalry and uh, now being a part of it. This is something special. An uh, impactful game where there will be a large crowd of people just ruined against you. I think it brings a lot of joy, energy, enthusiasm, and spirit to the state. You have fans that are passionate on both sides. I always think it's a great game for college basketball, and it's a great game for the people here in our state. And on the flip side, Rams star senior Jeff Doughton says, this is our NBA Finals, and his coach David Cox out handing out Dunkin' Donuts gift cards to the fans before this big one. When you wait long enough, you'll see Doug Sherman here, folks. He got like four or five of them. <laughs> you gotta love the dunk. If only. There's Coach Cox, second year head coach at the University of Rhode Island, took over after Dan Hurley left for UConn. Former point guard at William & Mary. Graduated in 1995. He was a three-year starting point guard, and we both had an opportunity to talk to him earlier today. He, like everybody around this program, so excited. This is their big game all season on campus. You know, he was a, is a great recruiter, but when he was the assistant coach for Danny Hurley, he brought all these talented guys into URI, and, and none more than Fats Russell. He was singularly responsible for him. And then last year, he had to learn how to not be 
the guy that everyone loves as the assistant coach. When you're the head coach, you're the captain. You just can't have everyone love you. You just got to tell them do it my way. And he transitioned halfway through last year. Now he's comfortable leading the charge, and the kids love him. Yeah, he only had a brief time as a head coach at the Division I level, replacing Mike Rice on an interim basis for Rutgers several years ago. And so now just feeling his way, 46-year-old D.C. area native from Landover, Maryland. He's just a great mind, a college basketball mind, and very humble. I mean, you'll never know his success from David Fox. Martin, the takeaway. And a foul on the dunk attempt will send Makai Long to the line. Well, we knew turnovers were going to be one of the keys in this game, and they're starting to mount a little bit on both sides. Well, the first couple were offensive rebound, I mean, uh, offensive charges and, and a setting a screen, but here's just great defense. And when URI can get out of transition, they've got thoroughbreds as well, and the freshman, Makai Long, he is going to be a good one. He needs to work on that perimeter shot a little more, but he is long and athletic. 6 7. A four-star recruit out of Bishop McNamara High School. He calls Brian's Road, Maryland home. And he liked the rest of the freshmen for the most part for the Rams. Try to find their role. The one freshman who really has found his way is Jacob Toppin, who has now checked into the game, the freshman from Brooklyn. And keep your eye on number 21 in blue. Well, that name obviously rings a bell with most A-10 fans with his older brother Obi having an unbelievable early season for Dayton. Pipkins way off the mark. And Shooting only 28% from distance so far this year. And Doug, he's taken the most attempts from behind the arc, and that was a poor attempt. You can get a much better shot. You can always get a 23-footer. Work it inside, take it outside. Russell. Drive and dish off a paint touch. Pretty good look in the corner. And Martin has three. You know, there's something to be said for a guy that's always in the right place and that can knock down an open jump shot. That's what Martin just did. Here comes Russell, the blur. No look to Toppin. Ball comes back to him. And he is fouled. You know, he is explosive like his older brother. Toppin is, but let's go back to this hoop. Nice penetration, and there's Ty Martin just stepping back behind that extended three-point line this year, getting his feet set, and straight up, straight down, nothing but nylon. There is Tyrese Martin, sophomore from Allentown, Pennsylvania, averaging over 10 points per game. One of four double-figure scores so far this year for the Rams. Topping at the line, only five of nine so far this season. He calls Brooklyn home from the Bushwick neighborhood, but he uh, lived upstate for four years during high school in Ossining, New York. And it's interesting how he, like his older brother, a couple of late bloomers, he's still growing and certainly still filling out. Uh, they said he showed up on campus last year, May, you know, right after high school at 6'5". I mean, he's easily 6'7 right now, probably closer to 6'8". He's all legs. I mean, his brother just grew another inch this year out there at a Dayton, so, you know, he has a very high ceiling. And actually, Jacob fell in love with Rhode Island when he came here to watch his brother play for Dayton. And with the atmosphere here in the Ryan Center, he said, I want to be part of this. I was going to say, how do you not fall in love with this atmosphere? Well, he could have followed his brother to Dayton, another great atmosphere place at UD Arena. But he wanted to carve his own path here in Kingston. This is Malik White. Ball finds Duke. Nothing but net. And it was Duke on the other end that kept Fats Russell in front of him, forced a tough shot, and then just jogs down and knocks down a really casual transition three. Well done. Well, Duke's doing real well this year. Last Friday night, a career-high 22 points against the College of Charleston. On the offensive glass, repeatedly the Rams getting after the bigger Friars. But come up empty on that trip. But it's different with the two freshmen, Long and Toppin, in the game, Doug. They're attacking that offensive glass, and you need to do that. I know Providence is bigger size-wise, but you can get in there and get some additional possessions as well if you were in that baby blue uniform. A.J. Reeves draws the foul on Toppin. Well, 
All freshmen have to learn how to defend, and Toppin's going to be a great player in this league. A.J. Reeves has been an elite offensive player since high school. Look at this, just step back. He knows he's got an excited, athletic defender on him. Just show the ball, as we talked about earlier, and then jump in, get to the line, knock down two easy ones. Or try to. Do you remember your first game uh, at Villanova back in the day? Our first game was actually, my first game, my first game was at Vermont. Coach Massimino was an alum, and it was the school's 1,000th victory. And I had like 8.6 rebounds. I thought I was going to be good. Well, you were good, but I'll tell you what, your no, debut was nowhere near as good as the man at the line. Last year, his first game, he dropped 29 points on Siena. Oh, I know. It, 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 and then he got hurt. He, it, Reeves had like three seasons last year. Came out, 29 points opening game, and he's going to be the go-to guy along with the Allo and Duke. Got hurt. You know, obviously missed a third of the season and then came back just a different player and you know, hoping that he can be that guy they saw at the beginning of the last year. He had a stress reaction in his foot that really didn't heal until the offseason. Langevin denied. Still fighting for it. And he'll go to the line. Personal foul going to go against Nate Watson, the junior from Portsmouth, Virginia. When you look under Webster's dictionary, beast mode, and there's surreal Langevin. I mean, that effort is, you can't teach that effort. He just hunts out rebounds. And we already talked about Young being 6'9", 250. Nate Watson's, and they're the same height. He comes in and backs them up. Those are two big men that Langevin's going after, and his work ethic is relentless. Langevin, born in... Guyana came to the U.S. with his father during elementary school. Was a cricket player first. Didn't come to basketball until late. That at the free throw line, just about what you'd expect. He's about 50-50 on the year. The free throw shooting, Doug, as you know, one of the best free throw shooters out of that Syracuse University. Which it's isn't a, necessarily That's true. It. Oh, you see, now I thought everyone else there would get that joke. You had to go tell the joke. But it's all confidence. You can take 100 shots. It's all confidence. Now that one might not boost his confidence, but it went through. 13-11, Providence with a two-point lead in the basketball in this rivalry showdown. White traveled, got the ball caught on his hip, dragged that pivot foot, and it's back to URI. We'll step away with the Friars on top by two. And as we celebrate V Week, the V Foundation, we welcome you back to the University of Rhode Island for this rivalry game. Friars up to Doug Sherman with Mark Plansky. And uh, explain what that means to you. Oh, well, this is the 100th anniversary of Illinois basketball and the 85 championship team passed out these challenge points. And on the front of it is our championship ring face. On the back is a bust of Coach Massimino who passed away a little bit two years ago, who had multiple cancers. He had four types of cancers. He had a brain tumor removed. He had lung removed, partial. And then he went to the doctors and said, you've got two more. And he said, well, can I have my wine? Can I have my occasional shooter? He said, no, you need radiation. You need extreme treatment. He looked at Mrs. Mass. He looked back to the doctors and said, nope, not going to do it. Give me, give me some meds so I can still have my wine because I love my occasional shooter. Yeah. And he was coaching up to the day he died two years ago at age 82. I just love this coin, Doug. Langevin lays it in. We're tied at 13. Well, join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for cancer research. 11.30 remaining in the first half. After a quick start, Diallo now puts the Friars back in front with a triple. And Martin was a little laxed on defense on that possession. You can't be lax in this type of game, folks. Every possession counts. Jeff Doughton halfway down. It popped out. Reeves finds the trail and Watson, who took an extra step. And he was just uh, uh, unsure of himself, Doug. I'm not sure that was an obvious travel. He just hesitated when he caught the ball. If he just came in in rhythm and one, two, and one up, it was an easy dunk. And it was a great look. I mean, a good pressure. Great job by URI getting back in an easy ditch. But see how he waited? If he just sprinted through that A-10 logo, he would have caught it one, two, and thrown it down. You know what that is in the NBA? What is that? A dunk. <laughs> yes. That here is the seventh turnover already by Providence. That has been a recurring issue for Coach Cooley's team. Martin with the hammer. 
Well, that's the second easy backdoor pass Providence has given up. I would look for Coach Cooley to go to a zone and change up his defense because now they're getting comfortable against the deny intense defense because that's what URI does every day in practice. So they're used to playing against that. Watson. Reeves pulls it down, brings it back out to Alpha Diallo. Friars reset. Again, the big man with a running hook shot. Nate Watson with his first two. Well, he's got big mitts, and you could tell he was palming that like a grapefruit and just <laughs> threw it down. He loves going off that left shoulder. You've got to make Watson go right. And he is feeling confident as Nate Watson coming off a career-high 15 points out in Anaheim against Pepperdine the last time. Turnover number six. I'll tell you what, during their practice yesterday up in Providence, Coach Cooley repeatedly said, if we don't turn the ball over, we're going to win. And you go back to that back door. When Fats Russell is playing the way he's played the last couple of weeks, he is passing, he's defending, and he's finishing. And he's already playing great defense, and that's an awesome assist to Martin for the back door jam. Fats Russell averaging 21 points a game, second in the A-10, second in the nation in steals per game at three and a half. Also averaging nearly five assists per game. Martin, a rainbow three. And how about this? After Cooley with his hands out, he went to that 2-3 zone, like the old 2-3 Syracuse zones. They really extend. They've got great size, but they didn't match up with the shooter. You always have to acknowledge the ball. No one covered the ball. Off the skip pass, good look on the wing, misfired by White. URI very small right now. I mean, Harris has two fouls, and he's got to be on that defensive glass. Great job of walling up by the help defender, Jacob Toppin. Now he's not too wide yet, but he's long, and he can extend. Great job walling up. Martin is starting to feel it before the shot. Foul on the floor, no basket. Personal goes against A.J. Reeves. Well, Martin's already knocked down 1-3. He did a great job attacking there, but here's the zone. He just makes a simple pass, and neither Fryer attacks the ball. And Hey, why not? If you're going to give me that shot, he's talented. He can knock him down. We saw him make 10 in a row at shoot-around. First foul on Reeves, fifth against the Friars. Russell giving room, a little strong that time. That's a great miss. Back of the rim at 12 o'clock means you're zeroed in. That's a good miss. You knew a thing or two about those. Oh, about missing? Good Absolutely. Misses. I know all about missing. <laughs> There's a good make, a banked in three, and I never heard Emmett Holt say glass. We're going to talk about Emmett Holt later during the game. It's a great story. He has really improved his shooting because that's all he could do for the last two years is work on that shot. I don't know if he called the banks open late on Friday night in Kingston, but it counts for three. Toppin lost a shoe, gets the basketball back after having put his shoe back on, but couldn't complete the play. Russell rejected by Young. Russell again. Dalton thought about it, now penetrates, hangs in the air, draws the contact, and a chance for three. Well, this crowd was dying to get involved. The effort has been sensational in the last three or four possessions. Look at Fat Russell, 5'10", 47 pounds. He gets the rebound, and who is tougher than Jeff Dunn on this team? Taking it right to the rim, Providence forcing him to go right, let him go left. Both Russell and Dowden, Doug, want to go left and come back to their right hand. Out of the same high school, St. John's College in Washington, D.C. is former Villanova standouts, Dante Cunningham. Dwayne Anderson misses the free throw, though. That's the on-the-ball pressure defense Dave Cox wants to see. Well, Diallo is a master at the shot fake. With that, he got the defender, Martin, in a tough spot. He picks up his first personal foul and takes us to our break. Just under eight minutes remaining in the half. We've got a good one. The Friars and the Rams. Thank you, Phil. Sunday at 3 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. It's a Lone Star showdown between Texas A&M and Texas. With Mark Plansky, I'm Doug Sherman back here at the University of Rhode Island. They sold out Ryan Center. I'm getting the sense, Mark. 
that the Rams don't like the Friars and the Friars really don't like the Rams. And the fans of each program may not like the other fans as well. But I tell you what, if I'm Dave Cox over there for the URI Rams, I'm down one point. I'm shooting seven for 24, 29 percent. I've only had three turnovers. I mean, I'm getting beat off the glass, but a lot of that happened early. He's got to be feeling, okay, all right, we weathered the storm. Yep. These kids now know what this is all about. Let's get down and play our brand of basketball. They have been defending, turning the Friars over. That has helped to even things out. Providence with the basketball. Alpha Diallo uses the screen. And the shooting for Alpha Diallo continues to be an issue. Only 21% coming in from beyond the three-point line. Tried the mid-range there and was just a little bit off. And it's a good look. His three, two possessions before was a good look. He's just not making it. He's not knocking it down. It's not for lack of effort. He has a great work ethic. Top and well short. Friars with it. Lawani Pipkins back into the ball game at the point for PC. That's a shot that Toppin's going to learn he can always get. Use your length, use your athleticism, and get to the rim. Duke under control. Good look, but it rimmed out. And here's Toppin. Rams running. Big collision. Offensive foul. And I think it's the right call, Doug, because URI Ram was out of control. You know, I mean, if he did a nice slow Euro step right here, it's a block. He's out of control. Good defense. Hands up. When you have your hands up and in front of you, as Pippins does, maybe got him on, the, got away with one on the forearm. You'll get that call more times than not. Diallo has his pocket picked again. Fats Russell turns it into two more. That's averaging more than two steals a game because he is a pest on the ball. Most of his steals come while defending the ball, which is impressive. After trailing by as many as six, the Rams with their first lead. Boy, the size and strength inside of the Friars is formidable. Duke. Offensive rebounds lead to pass out threes. It's the easiest shot in basketball. David Duke is your best shooter, Doug, from behind the arc. It's like warm-ups. When the manager gives you a pass money at the rim, that's how you practice. That's the easiest shot for a shooter. Russell, wraparound pass. Somehow found the man cutting down the lane. Jermaine Harris will shoot a pair of free throws. But as you mentioned, just the, the size of Providence, the only way to mitigate that is get on the ball. Be active. And just look at Fats. Good help defense on Diallo, and then he's going right to the rim. He's got two teammates following for the easy dunk. He's like, no, 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 I did all the work, Doug. I want the two points. <laughs> so he's got four early points. There is Darren Fats Russell. And the irony that he's the one with the nickname Fats, in spite of being only 165 pounds, but uh, as baby, as the story goes, his mom Terry gave him the nickname because, well, in her words, he was a chubby baby. It stuck, even if the chub didn't. And uh, I asked Fats earlier today, does anybody still call you Darren? He said, actually, my mom does on occasion. <laughs> it's come full circle. When she's mad at me. <laughs> I tell you what. This young man is the same age as Trey Young, and they played in the Peachtree Classic, which is a very high-level AAU tournament. He was runner-up the player of the tournament behind Trey Young. That's how good Fats Russell can be. Yeah, his older brother was a tremendous scorer as well for Dan Marley at Grand Canyon University. Tied at 24. Here's Russell. Started Imitep Charter High School. In Philadelphia, Long may have gotten away with a travel. He did, and Coach Cooley is <laughs> going to have to sit down to calm down. Boy, there's a mismatch. Khalif Young at 6'9", 250, trying to stay between Fats Russell and the lane. And credit Russell for recognizing it. Just the tackle. I mean, don't settle for a jump shot. I'm going to go by you. I'm going to get to the foul line. So that's the second foul on Khalif Young. I mean, you talk about big eyes. Fats Russell is like, geez, this is like shooter on when Plansky was trying to cover me. <laughs> right to the rim, folks. You know, down at this other end, I wouldn't be surprised if 
Providence and Coach Cooley go to that flex offense. They, they've had some good looks. They just have not knocked them down in the early season, Doug. Hey, get use the size advantage not just on the offensive glass, but they run the flex. Al Skinner and Coach Cooley spent years together here at URI at Boston College. I think you run the flex because Diallo is an excellent post player, and I think URI would have a hard time defending that offensive set. Six points for Fats Russell. The Rams up two. Another deflection, another steal, and another slam for Long. What do we say at the open? Every possession. You have to protect the basketball and play hard. Well, the defense played a lot harder in that possession. Diallo misfires. That's Russell glances at one of his teammates up ahead and says, uh-uh, shakes his head, didn't want to make a dangerous pass. Instead, drives on Holt, put it on the rim. Friars back the other way. Duke Ooh. behind the back in traffic. Gets the whistle. And the personal is going to go against Tyrese Martin. Wow. That ball was on a string. David Duke. We go back. I mean, this is just really good. I'm going to deny him to deny. Not a great pass from big to big at all. And then you know what? Hey, go up and contest that dunk. I mean, if you give up an easy bucket in a game like this, that just gets the confidence level for you, all right, even higher. No easy buckets in a challenge game. Period. End of statement. Elite White gets it into Duke. A.J. Reeves swings it back to White. Diallo, there's that shot fake. Offensive foul. So it's another Friars turnover as well. Uh, Langevin's been around these wars as well, and he is a very smart defensive player. He's covering Watson, slides off. Excellent job just getting in. I'm sure Diallo thought he was going to go for the block, so he wasn't even worried about being out of control and taking it right to the rim. Great defensive slide by URI. Diallo sits down with only three points and two fouls, 11 turnovers forced by URI. Langevin faces up, sets the screen. Russell gives it back to him. He spins baseline and is fouled by Nate Watson. You do not need to come out on Langevin. Give him that 12-foot jump shot. That is not his strength. His strength is exactly what we just saw, Doug, taking it to the rim strong. Foul number two on Watson. We'll send Langevin back to the strike. 6'8", 230, out of the Patrick School in New Jersey. Among his high school teammates, Nick Richards, of course, former Kentucky star. Jordan Walker and Boyd Koch at Tulane, and Bryce Aiken at Harvard. I say Nick Richards, formerly a Kentucky, still a Kentucky. Preseason first team all Atlantic 10 conference. Langevin gets a pair. Stretching the largest lead for the Rams out to six. And a big possession for the Friars. You're coming into the four minute timeout. Get a good look, get a good basket. White blocked by Long. Whistle comes underneath, and it's a foul against URI. I know the game plan for Ed Cooley was to pound it down low, and you can do that two ways, the conventional pass, but even better at times, the straight line drive. Because then you make a defense shift and change and rotate, and that will lead to even bigger mismatches of size, which is Providence's advantage. Watson misses the front end. Rhode Island looking to build on an 8-0 run. Basketball in the hands of Jeff Doughton. Langevin given room. Russell gives it back to Langevin, right to the rim. Oh, 
URI looks comfortable now on the offensive side because they're playing against the same defense, the man-to-man -man pressure defense. They play against each other every day here in practice. A.J. Reeves with a bad miss. Russell with a head of steam down the lane. Stuck back in by Langevin. Eleven points for Langevin as the Rams have opened up a double-figure lead. One team, coach. The Hawk is dead. St. Joseph's, in my four years, we were two and two against them. Every game was two points or less, one in overtime, one in double overtime, and it didn't matter what our records were. That was our rivalry game. What's it like in the palestra in Philly for one of those games? It's like this, except exactly half of the stadium is in blue and white and half is in red and white. And back in the day when I played, they threw the streamers. Oh, so, yeah. you know, if I was fortunate enough to be on the court when that happened, <laughs> you had to dunk and get out of the way. It was unbelievable. And I tell you, it was one of those, like, you don't realize it until you play it. My freshman year, I got in and I ran up and down. I had cotton. Yeah. I was excited to play, and then I couldn't breathe. Providence at this end gone stone cold, having missed eight of its last nine. Greg Gant, freshman, just into the game, snaps that skid for PC. That's the beauty of freshmen. What does this rival mean? Nothing. Give me the ball. What a smooth 15-foot jump shot by the big fella. That snaps a 12-0 run for Rhode Island. And I love Coach Cooley switching up the defense. 1-3-1. Let's try to get him out of that man-to-man -man flow that they were comfortably in the URI Rams offense. Langevin had it taken away by Gant. You know, great job. Coach Cooley just got that turnover. Excellent coaching. Duke goes to the floor and the whistle comes. They call a travel. It's just too early in the possession for that type of one-on-one -on -one cradle move. Make a pass, make a cut, make the defense defend and talk and switch, and then take it right to the rim because everyone's ready to help when it's the first non-pass possession. Coach Cooley trying to get some second half calls over there, Doug, and usually succeeds when he works the referees, the men from Foot Locker. Doubt. And an over the back foul, going to be called against Makai Long. Yeah, you and I have had the opportunity for years. We've gotten to know Coach Cooley. First, uh, for me as a head coach at Fairfield, you knew him before that when he was an assistant under Al Skinner, and he's one of the great personalities in the Big East Conference, no question about it. What a just a great gentleman of the college basketball fraternity. I love talking with Coach Shirley before the game. He's had great success, of course. You know, he was up for that Michigan jump. He was, uh, you know, they wanted him until Jawan said, I'm going to come. Jawan Howard, of course, came down, and that's comfortable. He's a Providence guy. But not only is he a great coach, he loves his kids, and his players come first. The help comes first. Nate Watson is a great example. Coach Cooley told us yesterday he could stay out another 10 games. I don't care if we lose them all. He's playing for money. We're talking about his career. He just cares about everybody in the program. A.J. Reeves with the free throw. Yeah, it's just part of an extended family for Coach Cooley, and uh, right from the time he was a kid growing up in South Providence, he was the eighth of Jane Cooley's nine children. He says, my mom was overwhelmed at such a young age, and so Ed moved in with his Little League friend and neighbor, Eddie Seawright, and Eddie's father, Ed, remains very close to Ed Cooley. And as a matter of fact, he sits behind the bench every game up at the Dunkin' Donuts Center, and he's made the short 30-mile trip down here to Kingston for this game as well. Family both within the basketball context and outside of the athletic realm is a huge part of Ed Cooley's life. And there we that. see off the steal. Here comes Vance Russell again. No emotion from C-Pop as Coach Cooley calls his mentor. There is C-Pop who is sitting a few rows behind the bench at C. Wright. And uh, Coach told us a great story yesterday about C-Pop. So uh, 
Three Eddies, brother and father, living in the same house. Pop worked two jobs for 40 years, and as Coach Cooley says, he fed me, he clothed me, he housed me, and taught me the importance of an education. Now 82, Ed continues to give back to C-Pop. So a couple of years ago, he took Pop to a Mercedes dealership, tells him, pick out a car. He goes, what? He goes, no, pick out a car. The salesman, by the way, former Red Sox Sam Horn, and uh, so Coach Cooley didn't have his wallet on him. Told C-Pop, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and get it. I'm good for it. But, of course, the dealership wouldn't let him drive off the lot with a Mercedes. Langevin! Wow. White dumps it off. Everything going URI's way. How about Toppin, second time today, walling up on the defensive end? White up ahead, Reeves. By the way, that story about Coach Cooley and Bayer Mercedes, like you, fine dinner. Hey, don't worry about it, Mark, I got it. Oh, no, so, where, where'd my credit card go? Well, just to finish that story, and I'm not saying you're wrong, to finish that story, Coach Cooley, without his wallet, had to call his wife at home and say, Get five thousand dollars, otherwise they're not going to let me get the car. So she shows up with five grand in cash, and C Pop looks at Coach and says, "Where'd you get that money?" It's like again, C Pop, don't worry about it. I'm good for it. We're good. And so he still drives that Mercedes every day at 82 years young, and uh, the family relationship—you can just feel it when you talk to Coach Cooley. Well, Coach Cooley is one of those guys that knows where he came from. And that's just a great example. Of that. Great story. You want to tell another one right through halftime? That was a really nice short story out there, Doug. <laughs> and so here is David Duke, another Providence native. He was a star at Classical High School. And he grew up just about a mile from campus. Said he uh, went to summer camps and was... So while Doug was talking... Langevin was sprinting. That is unbelievable athleticism. I mean, how good a defense, I mean, a tight end would this guy be? Patriots, forget about Gronk. It's a real Langevin. Catch and finish. So you're implying that while I talk, people can't also watch the action? I was implying they turned it down and watched <laughs> the action. Timeout URI. Rams holding on to a nine-point lead. And we're going to get Andrew Fonts into the game during this break for Providence. We'll take a break with 35.9 on the clock here in the first half. With Mark Klasky, I'm Doug Sherman. The Rhode Island Rams came into the season, picked fourth in the A-10 behind VCU, Davidson, and Dayton. Rams trying to improve their record to six and three. Long way to go facing their arch enemies from Providence College. Shot clock at 15, under 30 seconds remain in the half. Martin, tough shot. Rattles out. Well, tough shot, but so close. Set play, double screen on the baseline. Here is Andrew Fonts. White with 10 to play in the half, and that allows URI to get one more good look. Here comes Fats Russell, blocking foul. And Russell is shaken up on the play. I think that was a really good call. Nobody stopped the basketball. You can't sit back and try to take a charge against somebody as quick and dynamic as Fats Russell. He goes to the right, avoids it. You can tell he was leaning to the left. I think that was a good call. But, hey, why are you taking a shot with six seconds left? Down the other end, definitely slid underneath. Good call. Looks like he might have banged his wrist there. Or Hopefully he's okay. Fats tough, tough kid from Philadelphia. Well, we showed how Fats struggled in last year's matchup with the Friars up in Providence. He was great two years ago as a freshman in helping the Rams beat the Friars that night. He went for 20 points and told us today his favorite memory on top of the win 
What's that he had a breakaway dunk, one of only three so far in his career. He's got you by three. Oh, that's just beautiful. During his college career, and Fats is only five foot ten. Plus three. <laughs> Coach Cox told us that he broke out and he had that swagger in him that freshman year and learned last year you can't just show up and expect swagger to perform. And now we see that he's putting the two together and he has had a great early season for the URI Rams. Proud though potentially Russell holds his right elbow as he heads to the locker room having missed a couple of free throws. Our score 38 29. Now let's send you back to the studio. Back in Kingston, Rhode Island, getting ready for the start of the second half. The Rams in this rivalry game enjoy a nine-point lead over the Friars. And welcome back, everybody, with Mark Klansky. I'm Doug Sherman. Turnovers have been a huge part of the story so far. 13 by the Friars. And so the Rams have an 18 to 2 advantage in points off turnovers. And turnovers, Doug, are either created by the defense, URI doing a great job sliding and hands on the ball, or poor shot selection by the offense can lead to turnovers. We've seen a little bit of both. Here, Leandjavine does an excellent job coming off his man and drawing the charge. And just simple deny the freshman long gets out there aggressively in the passing lane, and that leads to an easy easy dunk on offense. Good defense leads to transition offense. You know, in Rhode Island, you know, look at the effort. Langevin on the offensive glass. Always follow up Fats Russell because if he misses, it's going to be soft. And then look at this ball movement. A little metal like lemon. Our road trotters weave. You take your eyes off the ball. Easy backdoor dunk. Recap our stars coming into the game. Alpha Diallo has been struggling. One of six from the floor, just three points, five turnovers. And on the flip side, Fats Russell has been excellent, although the shooting, not so much. But he has led his team and gotten it into good spots. When we last saw Fats, he was walking into the locker room, holding his right elbow after having missed a couple of free throws when he got knocked hard to the floor on a foul. We'll see if that impacts him here in the second. It was nice of you to go give him a couple of ibuprofen. That was awfully nice of you, Doug. A little, little rub and, down yep, there little, on the elbow. A little massage there. Absolutely. You know, you are always shooting 34%. There's another great on the ball hands, always active by Fats Russell. And they're up nine. I mean, they're 20% from three and up nine. That's what Providence, that's how they start the game. Yep. Young down low, just use that size, and then they got away from it. He's a perfect four for four. He made his first three shots early, and then we never saw him again. And his bucket makes it a seven-point game. Great job by Providence switching up the defense. Coach Cooley extending it to a one-two-two. Two. Left that wide open three, but that wasn't the best shot. Diallo dumps it off. Oh. Bounce pass throw through the legs of Khalif Young. Lavani Pipkins. Gonna be a breakaway. Langevin already has his 25th career double-double. Now 15 points and 11 rebounds. Look at him go. He is a beast, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Sherman will not be within 10 feet of Cyril Langevin. 10 feet. I'm a little uncomfortable sitting over here. <laughs> and again, Fats Russell just has his eye on the rim at all times. Diallo the pull-up. He's got five. And Coach Cooley looking at Alpha saying, that's my man. Just go play. Forget about thinking about everything. Just go be you. Be the stud that you are on that offensive side when you have the ball. Mark, one of the other key pieces of the equation for Providence is Lamonte Pipkins, who is still scoreless, taking only three shots. And when we asked Coach Cooley, as Holt stepped down the sideline, we asked him yesterday how he's doing, and he said Pipkins is a great leader. He's got great character, but bottom line is we need more points out of our graduate transfer from UMass. He's trying to transition from at UMass. It was, hey, Pipkins, here's the ball. Go get buckets. And he did. 20 points a game. Here, it's run. Coach Cooley set, and you have four other guys on the court to distribute the ball to. And it's taken probably more time than Coach Cooley perceived coming into the season. Now, this is a guy two years ago dropped 20 or 44 points, rather on the LaSalle Explorers. Average 21 points per game. There you see two years ago as a sophomore. Coach Cox puts his hands up and points at Jeff Dow. He's like, that's what I want you to do. You're six foot four. Pickens is 5'11". Nice little one dribble elevation. That's his mid-range shot. He's as good as anyone in the A-10, Jeff Dowden. 
mark. This is our largest lead of the night, plus 11. Diallo's fouled by Martin, and will shoot a pair. Sunday at 4 Eastern on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. It's a top 25 matchup. Cole Anthony and number seven North Carolina will take on fifth ranked Virginia. Does that interest you at all, Mark? Cole Anthony and Garrison Brooks are a terrible tandem to play against. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, the defending champs, Braxton Key going down really hurts. I mean, they only put up 40 points in their last out against Purdue. I mean, that one's smart. You know, Diakiti can really play. He's their senior leader, but you know that that pack line defense, you know, will keep them in games. But you know they really are going to miss Key's offense, and they got to find someone to make up those points. Here's a good look at uh, Alpha Diallo, the six-seven senior from New York City, from West Harlem. Gets the second foul shot. He was named preseason first team All Big East. I really like this extended pressure. Part of it is get the ball out of Fats Russell's hands. As you can see, it's worked now. Jeff Dalton's had the ball setting up the sets. And now you drop back into a zone, and then URI hasn't seen this 1-3-1. One, one. So it takes more time off the clock every possession. Dalton off the back iron. Fight for the basketball comes to Pipkins. He looked at Young asking for the ball. He said, I don't think so. No. no not, not you, big fella. Pipkins tees it up. Holt, Young fight for the ball, but of course it comes Man, I to Cyril Langevin. I'll go to war. He'll be in my bunker if you give me two guys. He's one of them in my bunker. Preseason first team all Atlantic 10 Conference playing like it so far tonight. Second foul on David Duke. You look at David Duke, very skilled offensive player. Langevin, not as skilled, but the effort is how you get to the next level. Like, people are going to look at Langevin in the NBA because of his body and his effort. You know, he's going to have to learn to shoot, obviously, but he has just as good a chance as a shooting perimeter player because of the way he plays. Timeout called by the Rams, so we'll step away also. URI up by 10. Providence freshman Greg Gant is playing with a very heavy heart tonight. His mother, Tawana Baldwin, died unexpectedly late last month. And so Greg will fly home tomorrow for her burial. He and Coach Cooley are going to be on a 6 a.m. flight out of Providence down to North Carolina tomorrow. And so this young man going through a lot, playing through it. And Coach Cooley, as we talked about, you know, he is a family guy, and, and he views Greg Gant as one of his sons, and he's certainly acting like it and going to be there for him down in North Carolina tomorrow. Oh, absolutely. Gant's been a little banged up, uh, you know, a, a thumb issue, an Achilles issue, and now obviously a heavy heart issue. They were very close. His mom and Gant were just inseparable, and, of course, Coach Cooley recognizes that. He's flying down, going to spend the day around the services and the next thing he does is not come back to province he's flying to philly to recruit i mean you know these coaches they're crazy diallo the putback what does providence need to do to get back in this thing more of exactly that diallo's trying to get his points from the perimeter get in the paint but move the ball east and west in and out and then get to the paint they have such an advantage they're not taking advantage of it completely as of yet Langevin lost the dribble. Duke. Gant is fouled by Fats Russell. We'll take another break with the Rams leading their rivals from Providence by eight. Doug Sherman, Mark Plansky, we're about a month into the season. It's never too early to start predicting. Who do you think is going to make it all the way to the Final Four this year? Mark? Final Four, to get that trophy, you need great guard play. Of course, you need talent, NBA, and you need upperclassmen. Dayton has all three. We talked about Obi Toppin. He's a lottery pick. They've got Rodney Chapman, and they got Trey Landers and Jalen Crutcher at the point guards. They're going to the Final Four. Kansas is a blue blood team with the same type of great coaching, great toughness. Asabuki is as big as anybody. And then, hey, I mean, after Evansville and Stephen F. Austin, you fill the next two, Doug. I mean, it could be anybody. This is the year of parody in college basketball. By the way, that is the 
this year's national championship trophy that we saw there. It is in the building and making the rounds around the country so that people get an opportunity to see it up close. And perhaps more importantly, as David Duke drains the three, gives a chance for the players to get a real sense of what they're all chasing. Now Providence, Ed Cooley got in the air that last time out. Came out, changed up the zone, it worked. Now we got good D, leads to an easy dunk. We got ourselves a ball game, folks. Get another pizza, don't go anywhere. From 11 down to three is A.J. Reeves. Slams it home just over five minutes into the second half. The one Landry thing is the zone. Sorry, Doug. This zone has slowed down URI. You know, the backdoor cuts we saw for the highlights, the one on one Fats Russell. This zone has higher length, longer length, and taller. Man, it's hard to get into those seams. Now you are right to man to man and wow great block. I mean that's just a nice little screen to screen. Diallo usually converts. Great defense. Here's Toppin bring it back out. Fats Russell for three. How about the pass by Jacob Toppin as the freshman. Great job show and go not out of control and let me find my man Fats because I know he'll knock it down and he's wincing with that right elbow after knocking down that three. Even with the ibuprofen I gave. You should have given them two, Cheapskate. Here's that flex offense that I was talking about in the first half. Take advantage of your size. In and out for Diallo. Ooh. Down. It goes to Long. Block. Second effort. And he is fouled. Poppin catches the ball, has his hands ready. Boom, show right there. I got nothing. Right back to Fats, who found that passing alley. That is so important for you young players. Fats made the pass, then create a passing lane and show your hands, be ready to catch and shoot, knock it down. Mark, that's been a problem area the last couple of years for David Cox. Rhode Island was dead last, as you see Fats Russell getting more treatment on that right arm. They were dead last in the country, 353rd in three-point shooting. Coach Cox will tell you a lot of that last year was because of shot selection. A lot of one pass, let it go. You know, go get it. You know, some of the AAU programs that you go around, the coaches, you'll say, go get it. Next pass to the next guy, go get it. Take them. The take them offense. Take them. Take them. That's kind of what you or I got, you know, trapped into last year. Now, look at that. Inside out, east-west, that's when the shots present themselves. Better shots, better efficiency. Nobody ever told you to take them. You never heard take them when you were on the court. No. Well, there you see last year, 28%. This season, a little bit better. Topping the takeaway. Wow. Pushing foul. David Duke made sure that shot was not going to get up on the rim. And let's credit Fats Russell and Langevin for getting these young guys, Long and Toppin, in the passing lanes. Hey, young fella, this is how we play defense in Kingston, Rhode Island. Get up in the passing lane, get your extended hand, and go attack it. When you get it, take it to the rim. You know, in talking about your Final Four projections, the equation in recent years has been Get old, stay old. We've seen that with Virginia. Villanova, it's something that Ed Cooley has tried to do over the years in Providence. And certainly David Cox has a pretty good template at Roland Island as well. That's as important as anything in the current atmosphere of college hoops, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, you know, 1987, Providence program went to its first Final Four. Rick Pitino, great coach. You know, they got that trophy. They started the three-point shot. That's old news, to your point. Everyone is learning how to shoot the three-point shot. The rest of the game, you have to dissect, figure out what personnel leads you to the best sets, offensive and defensive, and go from there. Nate Watson, back out front to Duke. Shot clock under 10. Duke has it blocked. Had it blocked again by Langevin on third effort. He missed the layup. Out of bounds. Back 
to the Rams. I mean, Ed Cooley is applauding the effort, but it's amazing in games like this in this environment. You just go a little too fast. You know, slow down. Get the rebound. Show the ball. Get on balance. Go jump into somebody. Draw the foul and get to the, the line. You'll learn that as you become a senior, but these young guys are so excited. They just want to pogo stick the offensive rebound instead of getting under control. Yeah, that's got to be so much easier said than done, though. Oh, absolutely. I mean, for my first two years, Coach Massimino would call me a do-nothing. I did nothing. <laughs> I was just so nervous. You know, you get in a game like this, you can't breathe. You forget everything, why you became a college basketball player. Then you become a junior, and then you become a senior. So whew, let's get to the upperclassmen. That's why I told you those final four teams, I mean, the last six champions have had great guard play and upperclassmen. And it's a big key. Saturday at noon Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Jalen Hurts and number six Oklahoma look to keep their playoff hopes alive when they take on number seven Baylor in the 18th annual Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Another steal. Rams on the run again. Long has his pocket picked. Diallo bounce it off. Reeves to the reverse. No. Good by the big man Watson run of the floor. Yeah, good rim to rim running by Watson, but I really love these freshmen. Totten and Long are showing the coaching staff and the seniors I can play defense too. I mean, a little backdoor time for Providence with this extended pressure. Tough shot made by Jeff Downton, the senior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Mid-range game is part of what you were saying earlier, not part of most of college basketball teams. Jeff Dalton has the best one in the A-10. It's phenomenal about finding a way of getting the basketball in 12 to 15 feet. Watson spins into the double team, spins away from it, but missed the shot. Long pass to Toppin, out of bounds, back the other way. Dangerous pass, turns into a turnover. And the Friars get it back. Well, when you know that you're comfortable between the circles, I've got an advantage. I can just go down, I can extend, create space, and knock it down, get back on defense. And Coach McGraw on Sunday, 4 o'clock Eastern on ESPN on the ESPN app. She and the Irish head to stores to take on number four UConn in the Women's Jimmy B Classic presented by Corona. With Mark Plansky, I'm Doug Sherman. Back here at the University of Rhode Island where the Rams who have uh, lost 10 of 11 in this series to Providence have been the aggressors for the most part. They were down early by six but they have been the aggressors pretty much from about the five minute mark of that first half going forward. Coach Cooley's done a great job changing up the defenses, trying to find a way to get to that advantage of size in the paint, but have to credit the Rams. They have every time it looks like Providence is going to make that run and tie up the game or take a lead, their effort has been outstanding. Malik White has come back off the bench for Ed Cooley. He's at the point with the basketball. Uses the Watson screen and another steal. Here comes Long who takes off and throws it down. You know, it's like, hey, you're going to give me a free burger every time I go to this drive-in. I'm going to keep going to this drive-in. Long is all excited. How about a little backdoor? How about a fake and a backdoor cut? One time, please. Chris Monroe has come into the game for Providence. There's a runner by White. I heard you say you were going to offer me a burger. See, folks, did you hear when I said free? Doug's huh? ears picked right up. What? Huh? Did you say free? Doubt from Russell. Here come the Friars. Diallo calls his own number. That's smooth. I mean, and, and the Friars have, when they get in transition, they're excellent. They haven't been able to get into transition because they've been turning the ball over. Offensive foul against Harris. Third one he's gotten on an offensive foul in a legal screen. And number zero in blue cannot believe it. York and his coach, David Cox, not too happy. And so he picks up his third personal of the game. Well, it happened right in front of Coach Cox. He, he had the best view in the house on this one. Now, at times you have to, you know, can't catch him from behind blindly. 
but that's a bad call. It's a great acting job. It's a bad call. That was not a foul. He was stationary. A legal screen. He took a step, Doug. That was a bad call. I agree. Doesn't change the fact, though, that it's his third foul, so he's back on the bench. Fats Russell has gone out of the game. Traveling violation against Reeves. I used to have make a little makeup, you know, um, you know, sign on my face whenever we had a bad call when I was, you know, spending my years on the bench after college. And I was on the end of the bench. I would just take my hand and do like a pretending I'm putting makeup on my face. Ah. Yeah, that's what that was. See, if I, I was on the end of the bench. I would say, hey, ref, nice job. Yeah, I thought you were going to say you've been wearing makeup since you were in college playing basketball. No, no. Well, sometimes. <laughs> Ball comes to Diallo. Nice pass. David Duke. Such an easy, fundamental bounce pass, folks. But look how soft that was to receive when you're running full. Always throw a bounce pass whenever you can. It's just so easy to catch and take off up to the rim. Langevin sets the screen. There's the mid-range by Delton. Then rattles home. Uncanny. And, and give Delton credit. Providence has the zone again, and he waited for that ball screen, re rejected it, and pulled up. Everyone thinks he's going to the rim, but he preferred to hit that floater. Walking into the teeth of the URI student section on the baseline to our left. Here's Alpha Diallo. Watson really wants to go over that left shoulder. Good defense by Langevine recognizing that. Reeves, tough shot, tipped home by Watson. Langevine went for the block as he should. Freed up Watson who just takes up so much space. Nice tap. Top of the pull up. Block shot by Watson and the Friars coming back down by four. Taken away. URI the other way, Martin. Lays it off the window, no, but gets it back. I thought maybe a little back and forth, two on one. It's so hard if you just give a ball up, you're going to get it right back. You know, too much, trying to do too much by Martin on that breakaway. If you have the advantage, Doug, get the ball up and then just call for it back. It's hard for the defender to cover two when the ball is moving. Watson to the left hand. Nice. Wow, Watson's over there listening to Plansky saying, oh, you don't think I can go with my right shoulder, huh? <laughs> that was impressive. Eight points for the junior from Portsmouth, Virginia. It's back to a one possession game. Good ball movement. And it results in a long layup. I wouldn't be surprised if Providence goes back to man-to-man. -man. They've been in that zone for a number of possessions, and now URI's figured it out. Get the ball to the middle. The baseline's going to be open. You know, credit offense. Nice strategy. Very good, efficient zone offense. Nine points for Long. He came in averaging just two per game. Good-looking freshman for URI. Under seven minutes to go in regulation. Calling for it again, Watson. This is the toughest stretch as a player. The eight to four minute in the second half of a rivalry game when you're all out effort, you really got to dig down deep. How about Watson taking a step back now? I can go with my left shoulder. I can go with ah, my right the, shoulder. I can step out and bury a jump shot. He's got the whole lunchbox on display. Impressive. Eight of his ten points since the break. Long attempt by Martin. Topping after it. Out of bounds. Malik White is limping away from that last sequence. Here's Jeff Dowden getting to the paint. Oh, you're not going to come up. Boom. A little floater. Absolutely hard to guard. And then the big guy. Step back. Take some of that, Doug Sherman. <laughs> Tonight at 1 a.m. Eastern on ESPN of the ESPN app after Lakers Trailblazers stick around for Sports Center from LA. Linda and Stan look back at the best moments between Melo and LeBron. Plus, on Giannis's 25th birthday, we break down his career milestones and inside the playoff implications for Oregon, Utah. 1 a.m. Eastern on ESPN.
with Mark Lansky. I'm Doug Sherman. We got ourselves a ball game. We were, we were saying, you know, okay, swings up and down, but in a game like this, last possession, usually the case. Well, you noticed and said as we went to break, Langevin was gassed. He, as much as anybody, needed that timeout. He comes out of the break feeling good. I mean, he only knows 110%. That's all he knows. That's third gear for this young man. Look at the enthusiasm. I mean, folks, that is a beast. And, by the way, nicest guy on the team. I mean, he is just a gentleman until it's game day. You know, after the loss at Maryland for Rhode Island, Terrapins head coach Mark Turgeon said, Cyril Langevin has the best secondary jump I've seen. Meaning, he jumps once, then jumps again quicker and higher. Probably the only one in the A-10 better is Obi Toppin. Mm -hmm. uh, just because he's bigger and more athletic. But effort-wise, you're absolutely right. The pogo stick that Langevin possesses, because he gets the ball, he's a very smart rebounder. He hunts down boards. By the way, that last foul was on Alpha Diallo, his fourth. He stays in there with just under six minutes to play. Russell! Timeout, Friars. That's Russell, 16 points, seven assists, and a huge jump shot to get the lead back to seven. The assassin. He was on the bench the last five minutes. Comes out in rhythm. Great job by Jeff Doughton, knowing who's on my left. One dribble. You cannot let this young man get that wide open in transition. Three-point shooters love to shoot the ball inside out and in transition. And, man, you talk about confidence. He's got a little bit of confidence, Douglas. Yeah, he's on a roll. 24 points per game, averaging over the last Last six coming into this one, shooting a very good 50% from the floor. His percentage not as good so far tonight, but in the end, he's going to get his, set up his teammates, and he's got them in position to pick up a huge rivalry win. And you just look at the expression on his face. He basically just stared down his teammates and said, right, it's go time. Yeah. we got six minutes. I'm here. I'm on the court. Time for me to shine. Head coach David Cox. In the huddle, and uh, the officials at this point are over at the table, taking a look at the last foul. Well, that's the second time in this game, Doug, that Providence has made a run to get it to three or four points, and Fats has knocked down a transition three each time. I mean, that is an intangible that he and Langevin have that you cannot teach. Yeah, that looks like it's incidental. Just a common foul. That's why the coach will tell, Ed Cooley will tell Watson, that's why you wall up and you don't reach. I love how the referees come over to talk to you, but they don't even know I here. speak a language that perhaps you don't. Yeah, it's all the time language. That's what you speak. <laughs> uh, John Gaffney just coming over to say they were making sure they got the right guy with that foul call, and they did. David Duke trying to work baseline. Cut off nicely by Fats Russell. Duke gets it back. Diallo with a clear out. The senior bottled up, six to shoot. How about the help by Langevin? Offensive foul. Those are the two guys we just talked about, Langevin and Russell. It's, everything starts at the defensive end here in Kingston, Rhode Island, and that's where the enthusiasm generates. And now we're going down to have some fun on the offensive side. Just move your feet, keep your hands in front, keep the player in front of you, frustrate the offensive player, get him the lean, take a dive. Mark Providence came into this game averaging 13 turnovers a game. They're up to 20 already with five and a half minutes remaining. You have to credit the defense of URI. They just get in, especially on the ball defense. We've seen Fats do it a number of times tonight. Here is Fats Russell, got a step on Diallo to the right hand. Did well just to get it on the rim. Out of bounds. Rhode Island basketball. How about that move by Fats? I mean, he's in the Redwoods. He couldn't have seen the rim, found a way to switch, go to his right hand. 
I mean, this is sensational. I got a bigger guy on me. I'm going to go right to the paint. He can't see anything. He just goes to the right. Outstanding offensive move. Toppin gets it back after the screen. Tough shot, Russell. No problem. Put not a show, the junior from Philly. Lost out of bounds, Providence will keep. 19 points, 7 assists, and a couple of huge three-point baskets late by Fats Russell. You cannot teach it. Did you read his lips? This is my house. I own this floor. How about that? Guy in his face. Going up. Going in. Toppin blocks the shot of Watson. This is where Providence really lacks that point guard leadership. Look at the guy with the ball right now, though, Jeff Dalton. He's been here before. He knows my job now is to extend the clock. We have the lead. Let's keep the ball away from Providence. Outstanding offensive discipline by URI. Langevin denied by Watson. Numbers for the Friars if they hurry. Lawani Pitkins turned down the shot, turns it over back to Russell. That's the wraparound. The tip in by Martin. Timeout, Friars. Fats Russell and company loving it in front of this standing room only crowd. This is the largest lead of the night. Thanks, guys. You know, Doug, I played with a point guard in 1985 on our championship team by the name of Gary McClain. He had this exact attitude. Couldn't shoot like this guy. Wow, it's just an unbelievable three. But how about this confidence? I own this place. Get off of me. Give me the ball. Game over. Gary led us to a national championship. Wasn't the best talent we had on the team, but he was just like Fats. He, when it was go time, give it to the kids. Game over. Whose house is it? It's Fats Russell House, at least so far tonight. Under four minutes remaining in this rivalry game. Providence doesn't have another push in him. Down 12, the biggest deficit the Friars have faced tonight. Diallo remains cold from the perimeter. And that's going to get Diallo out of the game. That's not the shot Providence wanted. Take advantage of your athleticism and get to the rim. Stop the clock. Get to the foul line. That's a settle jump shot, not what Coach Cooley was looking for coming out of a timeout. Diallo now 4 of 12 shooting. And these guys, Russell and Dalton, are veterans now. They know they want to take time off. Russell again! Oh my goodness. I love this kid! He put 32 on the Mountaineers the last time out. He's got 22 and counting against the Friars tonight. And here comes the 5'10 junior. On the turnover, though, Friars back the other way. Going for the exclamation point with the blind behind the back pass. And it was close, just a little too low for Langevin to handle. Another dangerous pass. It comes to Pipkins. Diallo, and he'll have a chance for a three-point play. I mean, what more can you ask for Fats Russell? You talk about confidence. Look at this. I love landing on one foot, too. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, all the guys that knew when the ball was released that was going in seem to have that one-foot landing, right, Doug? Like, I know what's going in, and he knew the moment it left his fingertips. I'm not a doctor, but I think that elbow's feeling okay now. Uh, the ibuprofen work. You should feel good. I should get an assist. <laughs> First of your career. Congratulations, <laughs> Douglas. There is the man of the hour so far. Fats Russell. Absolutely lighten it up. You see the seventh straight game where he has gone for 20 or more. He's second in the country in steals. He has reached his season average of about 22 per game. 
I mean, I would not be surprised if this Lions Center stays sold out all season long. How much fun is watching this team and Fats Russell playing the game of basketball? This has been a treat tonight. Over 8,000 in the house, not an empty seat. Doubt, tough pull up. Do the Friars have another run? Well, they need a little more sense of urgency. Two minutes left to go in the game. Now's not the time to spend all 30 seconds figuring out where the shot's coming from. Now 15 seconds into the shot clock, Duke initiates. Reeves over the double team, no. Rams have it. Coach Cooley tells his defense, get up after him. And Russell goes right around him, draws the foul, and his head, his face went right into the knee of Young. Another tough fall for Fats Russell. Fats Russell's childhood legend, Allen Iverson. Doesn't he remind you of Allen Iverson? Oof. Because I mentioned that nobody was tougher than AI on the court. Nobody. That's Russell true to form back up on his feet. After the foul out. That was David Duke who picks up his per fifth personal foul. doing this with a very short bench only seven Rams have played tonight Dana Tate their sophomore forward from Boston has been suspended for at least this game due to a violation of team rules so the only bench has been Toppin and long a couple of freshmen they've both been productive but that bench is going to get a little bit longer the next time the Rams take the floor. I got it this time. They Change the talk foul. to you. Change the foul. Black one called for the trip. That's Gant called for the trip outside. So Duke has not fouled out. He stays in there with four fouls. But the Rams are going to get the uh, services of Georgetown transfer Antoine Walker in their next game, November or rather December 21st against Western Kentucky. And he adds a lot of Langevin like toughness down low, and he's chomping at the bit to play. Got a lot of answers right now. Does David Cox, including the terrific freshman Jacob Toppin? Well, Jacob told us he could beat Obi outside all day long. His older brother at Dayton. That's a pretty good display. Yeah, we asked Jacob uh, during shoot around earlier this afternoon if you and your big brother Obi, who's of course the star at Dayton, a big breakout star in the country, if you played one on one right now, who would win? Jacob thought about it, thought about it, said with a smile, if you couldn't take it inside, I'd beat him. First of all, I've got four brothers, two older and two younger. One thing's to be sure, there's no referees when brothers play one-on-one. -on -one. So I have to agree with him right now. I would give the advantage to Obi Toppin. But the ceiling for Jacob may be as high as his older brothers. He's got a lot of talent. Ball out of bounds, back to URI. Well, Jacob's mom, Ronnie Toppin, is in the house. She's a frequent flyer. Follows big brother Obi to Maui earlier this season. And there is Ronnie enjoying tonight's action. Her son has five points off the bench for the Rams. Can't get better than that. I hope I do the Dayton URI game. First of all, for mom, she gets to just go to one gym and see both sons play. Right. But Dayton, URI, Davidson, VCU, this conference is going to put up a good show this season, Douglas. No doubt about it. Martin the rebound. Long baseball pass. Langevine. Young gives him a hack. And into the front row goes Langevine. One of the most popular Rams in the building. Have to put Fats Russell one. But I tell you what, Langevine has been outstanding. Another double-double. He was so instrumental in the first half. When they took the lead, he's got 17 points, 15 rebounds. 
And he sets the tone for this team on the defensive end and the effort end. And we saw it with Long and Toppin, the freshmen. They have to cover him every day, right? I mean, that's who they have to earn playing time from. And I would hate to do that. But they're learning quickly, those freshmen, that this guy, no joke. He's a man, he's a beast. I might as well play like him because it's working for him. And again, when Antoine Walker becomes eligible, that's just one more big athletic piece inside for the Rams. And with the star power development of Fats Russell, you could see how this whole puzzle will come together. Because this backcourt, as we mentioned earlier, one of the keys to get to that Final Four this year in Atlanta is guard play. And URI starting backcourt, very talented. You know, URI in David Cox's first season, Reeves with the dunk. The, his first season as head coach. They finished strong last year. Had a couple of nice wins in the A-10 tournament, upset VCU. You know, this is building. It's not just starting now. It's been coming for a year or so. And on this night, the Rams have been sensational. You think about 2018 graduates two years ago when Fats was a freshman. Not only Coach Dan Hurley, who went off to coach UConn, but E.C. Matthews and Jared Terrell. Both those guys scored over 1,700 points. Dan Robinson was the MVP, the glue. He was unbelievable. They had five seniors that started. Fats was a freshman. Last year, as a sophomore, he had to figure out what it was like to be the guy that every scuttle report is planning against you. Now he knows. Yep. And, he, and he learned by working when no one's looking. His work ethic year to year, Doug, has improved 100%, and he owns it. He's a leader. Coach Clark said he will chew my butt out if I don't do my job, which is what you want from your best player. He has grown into this role, has done everything here tonight, including that first free throw. And if he makes this one, his night will be done. Makai Long waits at the scorer's table. I hope he makes it because he's going to give one heck of an ovation. Here it comes. Hard to top the effort of Russell. 24 points, 8 assists. And for the second time in a row, the Providence Friars have come into this building and they have been Russell. That's got him for 22 years ago. He did even better here tonight. Oh, I see what you did there. That was, that was nice. Yeah, Very it's funny. like a verb now. No, yeah, that's Syracuse Russell. education. Never ceases to amaze. I didn't think Fats it would have worked as well as Russell. <laughs> I think you have to give the crowd a little six man award tonight too because when you have a team that really you know bases its success around the defensive end the intensity it's hard to keep that up for 40 minutes and the crowd the sellout crowd here in Kingston Rhode Island has kept the enthusiasm and the energy in the building transferred to the guys in the blue unis second largest crowd in the history of this building 8052 they were camped out beginning at 10 a.m. today and they've got their money's worth. Ball with 15 seconds on the clock. The crowd wants to celebrate. We don't want any more foul shots. You really have to give David Cox a lot of credit. I mean, following up that year, that 2018, they were regular season A-10 champions. They had all those senior firepower, that talent. Danny Hurley did an unbelievable job. He gets the UConn job. And David Cox had to come in and learn how to be that head coach. And he's done it superbly. On his way to the bench, Langevin stops at the scorer's table, looks up to the crowd, and echoes what his teammate Fats Russell just said. This is our house. They protected it extremely well here tonight. Reeves, short. And URI can just hold on to it for the final three seconds. Final score, 75-61. Rhode Island takes down its arch rival in front of a capacity crowd here at the Ryan Center. That's all from Rhode Island. College basketball continues next with Big 12 action. USC takes on TCU. Let's go to Fort Worth.